Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's video is in answer to a question by one of my lovely viewers. I'm going to bring it up on the screen so you can see. I'm going to bring it up on my screen so I can see the question. And yes, we will definitely look at the astrology on this matter. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something quite interesting. I'm going to use a different word for the word that they've used because I don't think the YouTube robots can, I don't know, maybe this is programmed in there, whatever. I'm not monetized. I, you know, this is all free what I'm doing. So I don't think they should take my video down, but just in case for this word, I'm going to use this word. I'm calling it the jab. So uh, are there going to be, you know, forced jabs in Australia? Okay, let's take a look. So the short answer, well, will they try? Yes. My short answer is, will they make it mandatory? No. I don't think this is possible. There is one transit in the Australia chart, which, yes, makes it seem like this is possible. I've been looking into this all day and um, I'll bring up various charts at various different points in the conversation. I've only got a few small notes here. I had a really interesting thought pop into my head. I think it was yesterday uh, afternoon and it, something just became clear in my mind as to what's happening around this topic. Um, and it's really to do with Rahu Ketu axis. So I know some astrologers have looked into it in terms of the nakshatras, you know, that are related to Soma. There's also the nakshatras that within them contain poison, right? That, that can be a really good thing to look at. I haven't really explored that as yet, um, but that's a very good way in. What occurred to me yesterday was that we've got Rahu moving into Taurus. Now Taurus represents food, right? That which gives our body nourishment. That's that which we put into our bodies, right? Rahu represents a trickster, okay? It's a trickster energy. Um, Rahu can deceive. Rahu leaders can be very interesting. They can fluctuate. They can be extreme. Um, Rahu leaders can be erratic. They won't be the most consistent or sturdy of leaders. This is why the sun is such a great leader um, out, of, out of all the planets. Uh, it, it's really the one that's a natural authority. It's got such consistency. We can really depend on the sun. Rahu, energy, not so much. And when we look at Rahu in terms of being the trickster, right? So what are we doing? We're putting this together with Taurus. Now Taurus is earth, earth energy right? So Rahu plus earth could translate literally to being a, a, a dodgy substance, right? So, you know, and, and I believe the, the jab or the liquid formulation for the jab or whatever it is, is due to be ready within the time when Rahu is conjunct, oh, not conjunct, but moving through Taurus, I should say. All right, so this is a 1.5 year transit. I have a video about this. I think that video will go live before this one. Um, I recorded it yesterday. So do check that out. I may leave a link somewhere or other. But yeah, I, when I came to that thought, that line of thinking that no wonder people are um, sensing that there's something wrong, right? We, it's so important to listen to the collective intuition because I always think that people out there are very intelligent and um, everybody, right? It doesn't matter what level of society you are. It doesn't matter what job you do. It doesn't matter anything. 
because people have a tremendous intuition. And the people who have a great intuition are usually not the academic ones. They're usually not the book people. They're usually not, um, you know, people stuck in offices, right? And I have a great belief in what the people are intuiting. It's like in Britain, um, you know, they talk about Princess Anne and they say that she's the king that Britain never had, right? She's got the sun in the 10th house. She's got beautiful king stars in her chart. So, you know, they've just correctly intuited her chart. And again, I think the public is correctly intuiting uh, this, this jab. And I think there, you know, there's a lot of people who really don't want it. There are a lot of people who do want it. And um, believe me, I don't want to convince anyone of anything, you know, because if you believe it's right for you, it may work wonders for you, right? There's um, Dr. Hugh Len, who taught the Ho'oponopono -pono technique. Ho'oponopono technique? I'll write it on the screen. I can never say it. But um, he created that technique. And one day he was out with this guy called Joe Vitale and they went to this burger place. And anyway, he ordered like this double burger with double cheese and double pickle and double oil and everything. Anyway, basically, you know, a supersized heart attack burger. And Joe Vitale's like staring at him going, are you actually going to eat that thing? And he says that, of course I am. I, I love this kind of food. And he says, um, you know, I'm in alignment with this food. I bless it with love and it, it doesn't harm my body. My body knows how to rid the toxins. My body knows how to, to deal with this thing, right? And today I was watching Michaela Sheldon. And I'm going to put a link to her below, because if you're worried about this, um, do listen to what she has to say on all these things. Her talk is very long. It's an hour and a half. I listened to the whole thing this morning. I thought it was brilliant. Um, I'm going to listen again because it's, it's great, great content in there. But believe it or not, for some people, this thing might be fine. I know I've got um, friends who, yeah, they're, they're going to go for it. Um, and I'm not able to air my opinions uh, with them. I haven't had the opportunity. If I did, I would. I would tell them exactly what I think. But um, yeah, it's very interesting, isn't it? So let's take a look at some astrology here. Let's bring up some charts and let's have a little look at a few more things. It's seven minutes. So well, how about we look at, and I did a lot of diving into what's going on here. First, one of the first things I did was I looked at Sweden's chart. Because I thought, what's going on there? They seem to have it all worked out. They're doing well with all this. And, you know, straight away, the thing that occurred to me, they're, they're in a great situation. They got Saturn third from the moon. This is very good. And sixth from the ascendant, that looks like. Yeah. Okay. So this is nice. This is a really good thing. Donald Trump has one of those right now. I think I mentioned that in a chart recently. Um <clears throat> It's a really good Saturn transit and they're dealing with this really well, I believe. Um, you know, I, why, why did I look up Sweden's chart? I looked up Sweden's chart because I wanted to get a feel for how much independent authority does this country have versus Australia, right? So if I bring up the chart and rotate to Lugna, because I was on the moon earlier, if you have a look at the, the Kendra, Kendra positions here, there's a lot of energy here. A lot of great big player planets, you know, um, terrific energy here. This is not as quiet a country as Australia. You look at Australia by comparison. And Australia is very similar, amazingly. The Rahu Ketu axis is the same with Mars there with Ketu. That was amazing. When I saw that, I was like, God, that's interesting. They are similar in some ways, but what I was looking for when I was contemplating the Australia chart, I was looking at that ninth house and I was thinking if only Australia had the sun position there. And I thought that could be really good because very often when people have the sun in the ninth house, they, they want to be the authority and they will have arguments with their higher authority, right? So... At the moment, I, I believe Australia is being very obedient with the higher authorities. Australia is just saying, yep, we'll do 
what you want. We've got Saturn the servant there, right, in his own house. So there's a real comfort here with Australia following orders, right? And what I wanted to find was a country where there's like sun in the ninth or something like that. And when I opened Sweden's chart, I had, it, we kind of sort of got a bit of that going on here. We've got sun in the tenth, which is great, right? It is that kind of thing. There will be the authority, right? Sun in the tenth, I'll be the authority. Um, and sun is the lord of the first house there with Mars and Ketu conjunct. This is a country that's skilled in being itself. Ketu in the first house. There's almost a perfection of knowing who they are. They're able to fight. They're able to say, okay, world, you're all doing vaccines, but we, we've got a different idea. We know what we're doing and we're going to be our own authority and we're going to, we're going to do it our way, right? That's what Sweden's got. They've got it in their birth chart. Australia, if we have a look at Kendra energies, not much of it. Um, the other thing about Australia is there's Rahu there in the seventh house. It's kind of, to me, it's like, and Australia does appear on the world stage quite a bit um, as this foreign and very exotic, fantastic place. Got Jupiter there in the 12th. It's an interesting one. But there's an inexperience of being on the world stage or um, what I was looking for in the Australia chart is an independence and an ability to challenge authority, which I don't find here. We've got some down there in the 8th. You know, it, this chart kind of wasn't doing it for me. I, it was interesting when I went through all the different bits of Australia's chart and I was looking at things like wealth and money and it, definitely this is a rich country. <clears throat> That's something I saw as I was going through. But the other chart that I did take a quick little look at was the chart of Daniel Andrews. And I wanted to see what's happening in his chart to create such strict laws in the city of Melbourne. Could, could we find anything? Is there something here? Sorry about that. Camera got cut. Just going to get back to the chart of Dan Andrews. Let's take a look. So we'll look at the transits because that's really where I spent a lot of time. I, I did have a look at the birth chart as well from the moon. We don't have the time. So that's where it's a bit difficult. But you can kind of operate with 50% information, right? the moon being 50%, ascendant being 50%, let's say. Um, I'm okay to operate just on the moon. You can get a bit of information that way. The major eclipses that happened in, I think, June, July, that's what I had a look at. And they're happening right on his natal sun. He's got Jupiter opposite. It's interesting, he's got a Jupiter return happening. And Jupiter can really be, it really is your world of view, your view of the world. So there's some culmination or some major shift that's happened to his world view recently, I think. As recent as uh, Jupiter being in Sagittarius. So we're looking at since November 2019, this is where sort of Jupiter return is happening for this person. By the way, I don't know anything about him politically. I hardly know a thing. Um, so this is an in interesting case study for me because I'm coming very blind to this person. Don't know anything about him personally. Um, so if we click up through time and we have a look at these eclipses, we'll see that they're happening, they're kind of happening bang on his natal sun, which is really interesting. So that, that grabbed my attention. Uh, this is very much to do with leadership. It's also to do with health. I think he, he really genuinely believes that he, if he doesn't do these strict measures, he, I think he kind of believes that 
you know, heaps and heaps of people are going to die kind of thing. That, that's, that is true. And I think this is um, Pluto-Uranus conjunct six from his moon, representing disease or illness, right? So I noticed that. So his sense of authority there in the third has taken a big hit and, and shifts kind of. Eclipses can really shift things for us. Uh, we've got natal Jupiter return again something happening there with his world view and I feel like there's something also something to do with a deal being done or something to do with money and this is the Sun ruling fifth from the moon Wealth from the Ascendant. It's a theory I have. I'm not 100% sure about it. I also did draw some cards and I'm learning cards at the same time. And from those cards, I was getting a sense that a deal has been done of some kind. Again, I'm not sure on the particulars. But guys, I think that's all I've got time for today. Thank you so much for the question. I also wanted to say that... Um, going forward on the channel and I know that the next few months might be a bit hard especially in the northern hemisphere and I've got a lot of viewers in the northern hemisphere as well and so this is worth saying I don't know if any of the northern hemisphere people have stuck around hopefully you have um, and you're able to hear this message but I wanted to say that I'm not the most political of people but if you ask a question I will answer it okay and especially if it's a good question that other people can benefit from or other people want to know about but otherwise on this channel what I really endeavor to do is produce kind of fun or light-hearted or interesting content um, I also want to you know look at look at um, all kinds of different things that are just fun and interesting and that serve as a nice distraction right so that is very much a big part of this channel just to just to be light and have fun here and not be heavy and political all the time but I mean I, I love that too, uh, don't get me wrong, that I'm monitoring that anyway all the time, just out of my own personal interest. So if you have a question about anything political or any of that, I'm very happy to answer it. But just know that, um, yeah, I'm not the most, you know, I'm, I'm not sort of up on all the political stuff. And actually, maybe that's a good thing, because then I'm really focusing just on the astrology, right? So that is actually... Um, that's actually possibly a good thing. So yeah, so ask me a question and I'll answer it. Otherwise, I'm gonna do, get back to the Masters series, have some fun there um, and all that kind of thing. And keep producing content that offers a nice escape or a nice distraction from the everyday. So as always, please do remember to subscribe, like, comment, and I look forward to seeing you next time.